Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation in BeamNG Drive. Today we are creating my very own off-roading vehicle. Uh, it's going to be sort of based off of a Jeep Cherokee, or no, not Jeep Cherokee, a Jeep Wrangler. Jeep Cherokee, yeah, totally. No, Jeep Wrangler, but it's going to be a bit better in lots of ways. It's going to be, you know, a bit more better performing, more power, uh, and, you know, just a bit more... Um, off-road oriented too so it's gonna be a total off-roading vehicle we're making an automation we're using the jeep wrangler body um it's probably the best one for the job i can use a pickup truck body they're just so large though uh, i was also contemplating like this and just making it look modern or even this tiny tiny this tiny where is it this tiny little one making it modern too maybe for another video i don't know so we're gonna do a probably partial aluminum panels i mean you can go for steel because steel is more rugged obviously but this is going to be a body on frame, a ladder chassis, body on frame, steel. I might change the AHS steel, front mounted longitudinal, full wishbone front. We're going to have the solid axle leaves in the back, probably. Yeah, that sounds fine. It's going to be a big old V6 engine. So much like, you know, I think the previous generation Jeep Wrangler had a, it was a 3.6 V6 maybe? I, I, does, does the new one come with a V6? I'm not sure. I know four cylinders, one of the engines. We're going to make a big old V6, though. Full of red cam, four valves, all over the block. Loads. And if we need VVL, I mean, we can have VVL, I guess. We have a very large stroke, smaller bore. But it's going to be a, a, a larger side of V6. It's not going to rev tons, but it's fine. Um, 3.7 sounds like a pretty decent size. We can go for maybe even a bigger one. Let's a 4 liter V6 sounds good enough to me. 4 liter V6. We're going to go for forge internal, just, just stock. I might change it up. Uh, we'll leave it to 9.5. I'll make 80. 75 sounds. EVT. It's going to be maybe twin turbo. Maybe NA. I'm not sure yet. Direct injection, though. Per cylinder. Standard intake. And premium fuel. Long tube there. Dual by. Probably. And a high flow through a catalytic converter, then probably baffled and baffled. So it can be up to six grand. Makes right now just over 270 or just 270 horsepower. Um, I think turbo, all bearing turbo. They'll be used as a basis. So we're going to turbocharge it. Uh, 250 horse is not an acceptable number at all. We're going to increase the power nice and low. We're not looking for horsepower, we're just looking for torque. It's not a diesel though, but it's. It's not gonna be a moment of a gas engine. We'll see. Uh, we can do or we'll get a or end torque until we made later on. Pretty what's the exhaust? Yeah, it's a little it's, it's struggling. Bypass and we'll size 0.2 inches. A okay, 280 horse around. I think I think the Wrangler is, is the high twos or low 300 horsepower. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's like two, either 280 or it's 310. I don't know. Either way, it's got, uh, I think, over 300 torque as well for a, a, a turbocharged four-cylinder. So we're going to shoot just a bit higher than that. We're shooting for 300-ish. It's a lot of torque. It's a lot of torque. Can we keep going? Oof. This. Just do a little more. So 465 torque and 315 horsepower, 25% efficiency, which isn't terrible. This engine's probably not going to be cheap, though. We'll see how performance looks like the body on the vehicle. Uh, and like I always do, I'm just going to leave the body as I might change the fender flares and stuff. I'll leave it as is, and I'll design it all after. Four-wheel drive, obviously. Now, the question is, advanced, uh, should we have, have, have an automatic gearbox or a manual? Mm -hmm. Six-speed manual is fine. We're gonna have a manual lock and diff is just better. It is just better. Electric lift, I mean, it, it's better stats for off road. Not better than no, manual. We'll just leave it on manual for now. I might change this to electric because, um, you know, probably not have a manual locking differential in 2020. Radial off road tires. These are huge tires. I'm gonna have that wide actually. A bit smaller. Two fives, two sixty-five. That sounds pretty fair to me. 
uh, steel wheels because you would not want aluminum wheels for off-roading because you know a lot easier to bend and warp they're not, not as strong as steel uh chunky af tires though 19 inch wheels and then massive massive thick tires past that be good uh vented discs discs i go solid four persons i'll probably make it we'll leave it a max size well it's stopping power is great we can do off-road skitcher but that doesn't actually help or anything you know it doesn't actually benefit anything balloon flaps so i might go fully clad just because it's gonna get us better fuel economy um five seater is fine sandwich is like an off-road orange off-roading i don't know standard standard uh hydraulic variable i guess everything else and then suspension we're going to go this is sure, right we can go hydro pneumatic Good off-road stats, or we can go active comfort. I think active comfort is going to be a bit on the expensive side. It's very, very tall ride height. I might just a bit. 20 inches of ride height. Wow, that is that is some vehicle. If you can see the the engine and like the <laughs> the axle, <laughs> just just right there. If only it had portal axles like the uh, Mercedes does. It'd be pretty up here and stuff and i don't know so what do we got for stats weighs 40 400 pounds it's a bit heavy 060 is in the six and a half second range which is honestly great honestly just awesome 40 grand which is the wrangler money to be honest for a more powerful vehicle what's the fuel economy that was we're getting 14 average it's what's worse worse but what if we went for like a dual clutch for fuel economy or no we're not actually Hmm. Well, limited slip. Uh, yeah. Electric limited slip differential. That tells five. Bring up to. So we'll, we'll, we'll gear up to 300. Seven speed. 19 miles per gallon average is getting better. Um, There's a, a bit of money to play with, though. A bit. If we actually increase this room, not much, not really enough. Like this. I mean, 19 is not, not a terrible. I, I will check with the Wranglers, actually, after I'm done the design of the car. 46 grand, honestly, seems seems not bad. Uh, what if we went for low friction cast? Is better. I think it's only getting us worse just because it's uh, not running properly. 24.2 compared to what? We're just getting us better than low friction, really. That, that should be helping with, uh, I, I, yeah, it's low friction should be helping us with the uh, the fuel economy. The forge is actually doing more in this case. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let it, I'll let it be forged. Um, 315 horse, which is good. Torque is made at 2,800 RPM, then it just sort of takes off. You just want to keep it, I guess, literally. But then the horsepower is very linear after that, which is fine. I think I think overall 5.8 seconds zero to 60, top speed of around 225 kilometers an hour, which is pretty high for this vehicle. The drag coefficient is awful. Um, this thing is is heavy. It's a heavy vehicle, obviously. Um, bigger than the Jeep? I'm not sure. I might, but this doesn't really matter. It's an understeer, 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 oversteer, starting at around 140 kilometers an hour. There's nowhere. There's nowhere you're driving to taking this 100. I'd be shocked. Uh, I'm gonna leave it just to the off-road. A higher one. Okay, this is going to be a very off-road focused vehicle. Obviously, um, what I'm going to do now, design the vehicle, and I'm also going to tweak it, etc. It'll take a few minutes. Um, you guys enjoy this time lapse.
and we finally have complete in front of us the 2020 Starzashi Sandrunner STS. Um, so the backstory of this is go, you know, the backstory of this vehicle is it's basically just a rebadged Jeep Wrangler with a different engine. You know, it basically Starzashi, which is one of my auto brands that I like to imagine I have. Um, let's just say they bought Jeep Wrangler bodies and almost certain parts like the bumpers definitely jeep cherokee or jeep uh, wrangler etc and they just took the a few bits from there and they made it their own um because let's face it this still resembles a jeep wrangler even though it doesn't resemble a jeep wrangler um i took cues from just several different vehicles uh some g-wagon cues here and there uh, of course there's a little glitch right here where it's just shooting up but i'm just gonna ignore that because you know it's breaking my immersion guys i'm just kidding uh, I took this cue right here from the Hummer, <laughs> just because I thought it looks kind of cool, actually. Maybe I'll make it just all, all as that. I, I kind of like that, you know? This. Is this. This. I don't mind that at all. So we have, yeah, there's actually Sandrunner. I didn't want to, I wanted to come up with something like something that was taken, obviously. Sandrunner sounds okay. The rims. Uh, they suited decently. I mean, they definitely wouldn't be four lug rims, but um, you know, teach their own. I guess this is, this is a cheap version, even though it's sixty grand, um, which is, you know, probably around what you can get a, a Wrangler for. Probably it's above what you can get a Wrangler for, but it's 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 you know, kind of comparable. Uh, six speed manual is the only transmission offered, of course, like any true off roading vehicle. Even though the Jeep doesn't come with manual at all, that's why the people are buying the uh, the standard. 5.7 seconds, 0 to 60, which is nuts for a four-wheel drive. Um, 315 horse, not terrible. 465 torque, so a good amount of torque. Um, the fuel economy is 19 miles per gallon. I'm assuming this is always average, which is actually just under the Jeep Wrangler, which is 20 or 21 or yeah, about 21 miles per gallon average. This is pretty close, even though we have a much, I would say much more powerful, but definitely a more powerful engine. Doesn't run very high at all. I get a little bit higher up as well. Let's just make sure it's reliable. What's the reliability on this thing? It's uh, 73 reliability, which is not bad at all. Seven, oh, that's emissions. It was like 76 for 62 reliability, not terrible. Um, and a couple things about it. So you can see right here, Sand Runner. We got the um, Gasmia plate. Hatch opens over the back and opens like this. Just swings open. You got the tail lights. You got a big old reverse light there. Some old style, sure. Turn signals are in there as well. I do have a little bit of a, a wang up here, so it's a bit easier to get the aerodynamics better, so it just doesn't have terrible oversteer. It didn't have terrible oversteer, but just it has a little understeer. You want this car to be pretty safe. It did affect fuel economy just a bit, but not terribly. Um, what's left for the vehicle? Um, its stats are all mediocre. What's this off-road stat? The off-road stat is, from will please, well, 37 for utility and 74 for off-road. Okay. I'm not going to test it on the automation test track because I don't care. It's fine. Full angles. Jesus, that's awful. Uh, weight distribution is great, 49.51, so near perfect weight distribution. What we're going to do now is drive this car in Beeman G Drive in a variety of different things and stuff. So see you guys in just one second. And we're here finally in Beeman G Drive with the coveted Starzashi Sandrunner STS. STS stands for Sport Turbo Super? I don't know. I don't know. So, so, sport Star something something? I don't know. Uh, we're gonna start going here. We're in arcade. We're gonna go to realistic. This thing is actually just pretty fast. <laughs> we're just in high range right now, not low range. We're just sort of racing up this hill. We're just gonna cruise around basically for this uh, beam portion of the video. And again, note to self, guys, I am using a keyboard, not. Okay, well, I did actually uh, actually recorded the testing part of the um, challenge, the Canadian Seal. And I actually recorded that in a steering wheel, just because it was definitely needed. But uh, it's not my steering wheel, it's my brother's steering wheel. I, I, I can use it all the time and stuff, so I could probably use it if I wanted to, but it's more work. We're gonna go this way, just up the hill here. We, we don't even need low range yet. I'll keep it in second though, just so we have, uh, cause all the boost is around 3000 RPM. I'm trying to make it up this hill or something. We'll see if we can make it up this, uh, this stuff. Just see for a second. Oh, that's a lot of ground. Look, a lot of ground clearance. You guys look where the exhaust is too. Look at that. I got the uh, side exit exhaust. I thought it looked pretty cool. I wanted to keep that. Mm 
Looking pretty good though so far it seems. Gonna put it on low range. No, don't disconnect the drive shaft. Let's put it on low range. That was honestly pretty impressive. I like struggled to shift there because I wasn't I wasn't playing properly really, but. It's quite honestly in a race, this thing probably wouldn't be terrible. I mean, it, it's very, very, very soft, but uh, ooh, there's a hill climb right there. We're gonna, we're gonna, do, we're gonna do this nice hill climb. We could, we're just gonna go right down here. There we go. Oh, we lost the uh, front push bar, I guess is what that was. We lost the entire front bar. That's just fine. Wow, that's honestly pretty impressive. I can even let off the gas and just go. That's honestly pretty impressive. Honestly, I like this vehicle. It's a good, it's a good size. So I have in front of us a trailer. Yeah, it's a trailer. It's attached to our. What is this, what is this called? The sand runner. Yeah, it's, called, it's attached to our sand runner. Trailer weighs about uh, twelve hundred kilograms, so it's it's not that heavy. Um, I couldn't find anything in between this or like something huge like it, you know like it can't haul a semi trailer but I suspect it can haul around 3,000 kilograms it should be fine by itself I'm thinking so we're gonna take it up this dirt hill just above us we should be more than fine I think Drive like this oh wow you can tell you can tell you can tell you're hauling a trailer it is very It's just this trailer, like the ribs are just. <laughs> I definitely should have been playing the ribs just a bit. Oh, what do we want up here? Remember, we are not on low range right now. We're just in regular high range, or normal range, I guess is what it would be. Do this turn nice and easy. Nice and easy. There we go, even though the back end, I think, just hit something. She's not like doing more than 40 kilometers an hour. We're very close to the edge. We should probably stay a little else to the right side. Run up another turn here. Ooh, the trailer's falling. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> oh gosh. There it is. <laughs> this is fine. Going for a little bit. It's just very fast too. Very fast. I mean, it's relative speed, but you know, it's quick for a SUV. It's definitely up there for one of the quickest off. It's probably the quickest off-roading SUV, I'd say, right? Like what else? There, oh, I guess the the G the G wagon Mercedes. It is a bit. Oh, we're going downhill, I guess. Perfect. Now, let's respawn the vehicle right here. Can we get out of this? If we can get out of this, I consider this car a pass. If not, it's a failure in my eyes. So let's just... Low range. Oh god, this is not looking great. If I had locking differentials, maybe. Uh, I mean, probably not to be honest, but you know, it'd have a better chance anyways. Let's go around here. A little bit left of off-roading. I need to make a Baja buggy at some point, eh, I guess. Oh, we're going this way. Oh boy, that's not good. Oh no. Oh god, it just keeps going. We're fine. This is fine. Perfect. Well, you know what? It still drives. I'll consider that a win in my eyes. Uh, I think we're gonna end it off here. This car has definitely been 
this vehicle, like, it's not really, it's not a car, this SUV has been probably, I, I would say my most off-road capable vehicle, I haven't really made anything this great off roading and that's, it's just pretty good, it has a lot of grip, um, looks objectively fine, I mean, obviously it looks like a Jeep, but, uh, looks objectively fine, I'm not, I'm not a Jeep fanboy, but, um, it's an off-roading vehicle, so what do you expect? Let me know down below what you want to see me do next. Uh, I, have, I do have more cars I'm going to do, obviously. I have, I have a bit of a list going. Uh, I would like to make a sleeper car. Maybe that'll be in the next challenge. Or maybe a pickup truck, like a modern pickup truck. I mean, I don't really want to do another off-road, but just like a run-of-the-mill standard pickup truck. Or maybe a police car or a taxi. Who knows? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, so thank you so much for all the support, guys. And as always, I'll see you next time.